Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be going over the new Post Effects Blender add-on, what it is, what it does, and how to use it. In a nutshell, the add-on enhances and extends the existing Blender compositor with 40 core new features and functionalities to make the entire compositing experience much more efficient and effective. Included with the add-on are 30 new core image adjustments, 12 filters for color grading, 12 different visual effects, as well as three new input nodes. The main goal of this add-on is to bring features that were previously only available in external image editing software directly into Blender's compositor to make the entire compositing pipeline workflow much more seamless and easy to use. Aside from adding a whole bunch of new features and functionality, PostFX also significantly improves the results of existing Blender nodes such as the brightness, contrast and saturation by using luminosity as a base rather than the raw pixel values. So now that we've talked about what the add-on is and what it does, let's jump into a real world example to see how to use it. Okay, so before we get started, let's quickly go over the process to install the add-on and then we can jump straight into the compositor. The first thing you need to do is make sure you have the latest version of PostFX downloaded. Then we're going to go across to edit, choose user preferences and click install. Once we've done this, we need to navigate to the file location, select it and click install add-on. After this, you'll notice a new box appears. Here we just need to enable the checkbox and now the add-on will be activated within Blender. If at any point you need to change the shortcut for this add-on, you can access this here in the menu at the bottom. Just click in this field and then bind the new key that you want to use. Okay, so let's jump across into Blender. Here you'll notice we have our default 3D view. The first thing we need to do is change this to Blender's compositor. To do this, we're going to go in the top left hand corner and select compositor. From here, if you have post effects installed, we just need to press Ctrl A to bring up post effects and it will set up everything that we need for Blender's compositor. Here I'm going to select image as I want to be adding a new image to the scene. From here, the next thing I'm going to do is select a preloaded image. Then I'm going to make sure my control is selected, press Ctrl A and select preview. Now we have a preview set up in the background so that we can see what we're doing. Next, I'm going to press Ctrl A again and let's just zoom out a little bit so that we can see the entire image. For now, we can select the render layers and press X to delete as we no longer need it. Notice how here in the control we can change many of the different aspects of the input image including the scale, rotation, offset and the type of fitting. Here I'm going to use a fit type of 2. Fit type 0 basically means that the image is stretched to the output dimensions. Fit type 1 basically means that the output image is cropped so that the input image fits inside it. And fit type 2 basically means that the input image is cropped so that it fits the output image dimensions. Before we continue, let's open up Post Effects to see all of the different options that are available to us. At the top, we have the filters, on the right, we have the effects, and at the bottom, we have our image adjustments. On the left, we have the input and output controls for adjusting the different image channels. In this case, I'm going to be adding a brightness, a contrast, and then a flare builder. Notice how quickly we can assemble this entire pipeline without needing to do anything else. From here I'm going to select brightness, then I'm going to press Ctrl A again, select contrast, and again one last time for flare builder. If at any point in time you need to preview a specific node, you can do this by selecting it and then pressing Ctrl A and selecting preview. Notice how now we can get the output directly without needing to consider any of the other nodes that were previously in the pipeline. In this case, I'm going to turn up the strength of the brightness to 1. Notice how the entire brightness of the image is increased rather than just a bland washing out. If we press Shift A to add a standard native node, for example the brightness and contrast here, let's compare the results and see what we get. Here I'm going to select it and choose preview and then we're going to boost up the brightness. Notice how the entire image is completely washed out and that we don't actually get a proper increase in brightness like we want it to occur. If we now select the post effects brightness and add in a preview, here if we boost the brightness you can see the brightness of the entire image is increased and we get much much better results. 
In our case though, this is much too bright and we want to stick with a value of 1. An important thing to note here is that many of the controls such as strength here work in two directions, so we can also add negative values, for example negative 1, and this will make the image darker. In our case again, I'm going to set it back to 1. The next thing we're going to do is select our contrast node. Again here, I'm going to press Ctrl A and select Preview. In this case, I'm going to decrease the contrast by 0.5. The last thing I'm going to do is move this down here, select the Flare Builder, move it down here as well, press Ctrl A and select Preview. The Brightness and Contrast node here is no longer needed, so we can press X to delete it and start to focus on this new flare that we are adding to the image. The Flare Builder here is what we call a post effects Super Node. What this basically means is that it contains an entire pipeline that has been condensed into a single node to make the process much easier if you want to layer different effects. In our example here, we're going to add a blue flare and then add a yellow flare on top of it to have a composite flare result. To do this, I'm going to select my flare node, move the compositor over here, then we're going to choose a color of blue, turn down the glow, activate the spot as well as the streak. Here you can see we now already have a relatively good looking flare. And then I'm also going to turn up the scale on the Y axis. In our case, I'm going to select two. This way we can stretch the background on the Y axis without needing to affect the main flare. The next thing I'm going to do is turn up the strength. Here we'll select a value of three. Next, I'm going to increase the color to make it a bit more saturated. Then I'm going to select this node, press Ctrl A and add a second flare builder. Notice how now we have a composite flare. From here, I'm going to select a bit more of a yellow orange color. Then I'm going to turn up the rays, turn down the glow to a relatively low value, increase the star value here as well, and then boost the strength to three as well. The last thing we need to do here is perhaps stretch it a little bit on the X axis. Then we're going to change the offset to make sure it is on top of the lantern here. To do this, we are going to change the offset of the main flare on the X axis until it is aligned. In our case, a value of around about negative 15 seems good. So I'm just going to add it in here. Afterwards, we are going to increase the Y offset so we're going to turn up this value to something around five. In our case, actually, let's change that up to the center of the lantern, so that will be around about 11. The last thing we need to do is change the background of the flare here to also correspond to the same position. We can select the field, press Ctrl C to copy, type in here, and then press Ctrl V to paste. We can do the same thing with the Y field here as well. Last but not least, let's add one more effect to make this image even more interesting. Here I'm going to select the end of the compositing pipeline, press Ctrl A and then select Symmetry. Now we can choose if we want the symmetry to occur on the X axis or the Y axis or both. By default, both of them are activated. In our case, if we just want to have the X axis, we can turn the Y axis down to zero. So there we have it, our final result that looks much more interesting than the starting image. One last thing I'd quickly like to cover is the options if you want to change the behavior of post effects and the way that nodes are inserted into the current tree. To do this, all you need to do is jump across to the options menu on the right here, and then there is a post effects panel which allows you to select which options you want to use. By default, the auto optimize preview is always selected. What this does is make sure that the chunk size is set to 128, OpenCL and buffer groups are used as well as an edit quality of medium. These settings have proven to be the most performant in my experience, but in the case where you have different results because you have a lot more cores on your CPU or a more powerful GPU, it might be worth it to change these settings a little bit and for example to increase the chunk size or to decrease the edit quality. If you'd like to do this, all you need to do is just turn off auto optimize preview and then change the settings here. If the auto optimize preview remains checked, then every time we open the menu, these settings will get reset. The next option here is auto insertion, which basically does what it says. It automatically inserts a node into an existing chain. 
If you turn this off, the node will not be automatically connected to the output, making it easier to have multiple diverging compositing chains. To just quickly go over an example, let's jump back into our node tree, select our contrast for example, and then I'm going to make sure auto insertion is turned off. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a vibrance node. Notice how here the output was not automatically connected to the flare builder. If we do this action again and select auto insertion, here I'm going to select vibrance, and notice how now both of these have been added to the existing chain. So that's the end of this video, I hope it was useful. Again, what's been shown here in this video is just a very small part of a very large add-on with a whole bunch of different diverse options. So if you're interested in any of the other functionality in any of the other nodes that are included, there's a link down in the description to the product page where you can read a lot more about the details and the before and after on certain images to see the end effect. There is also some screenshots of the user manual which better explain what each of the different nodes do. Otherwise, that's been it. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.